What is the worst thing that you could eat other than outright poison? <laughs> well, I would say, and I think a lot of scientists would agree with me, that the very worst thing you can eat is something called trans fats. Trans fats used to be ubiquitous. They were all over the place years ago. Uh, and I'll tell you basically a little brief history of how they got started. Uh, vegetable oil is as a polyunsaturated oil it has uh, and what happens is it's very prone to oxidation and in the 19th century you know they were already using vegetable oil which is of course omega-6 fatty acid not good to, not good in, in itself to take too much of because it causes inflammation in large amounts but in any case they were looking for a way to prevent that rapid oxidation it took, they wanted to increase the shelf life of vegetable oils so some some scientists started experimenting with what they call hydrogenation. Basically, hy hydrogenation is, is uh, uh, basically adding a hydrogen to, let's say, polyunsaturated oils. When you add a hydrogen, it basically solidifies. It turns a kind of a liquid oil into a solid oil. But in doing so, it, it actually almost completely prevents the oxidation. It has a much longer shelf life. And the first commercial product they came out with that utilized this new technique of hydro, 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 hydrogenation or adding a hydrogen to, let's say, vegetable oils was a product produced by Procter & Gamble, which was a food giant company. It was called Crisco. And it was first produced in 1911. And it transformed the food industry because you know trans fats nobody knew anything about the nutritional effects of trans fats all they knew was that it extended the shelf life of of unsaturated and polyunsaturated fats it prevented premature uh, oxidation or rancidity uh, so it became used in everything uh, for, for years uh, various scientists demonized sat saturated fat and they told people not to eat stuff, uh, natural foods that contain saturated fats such as butter. So years ago, instead of eating butter, a lot of doctors and scientists advised people to start eating margarine. Now margarine was considered much healthier than butter because it didn't have much saturated fat, but what it was was almost pure trans fats. Uh, now uh, trans fats started showing up in just about every processed food and then the research started coming in a couple of years ago uh, actually about you know 25 30 years ago they started really testing the effects of trans fat on human health and what they found was shocking turns out that saturated fat which had this bad reputation of causing heart disease uh, when in fact well the reason that that, that saturated fat causes uh, cardiovascular disease is because it's, it, uh, it, stimu it uh, promotes the production of, of what they call low-density lipoprotein in the liver. Low-density low lipoprotein or LDL functions to carry cholesterol in the blood. When low-density lipoprotein gets oxidized, it tends to, uh, well, I don't want to get into the whole process, but let's say that oxidized LDL <coughs> is a stimulator of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. That's the, what they said about saturated fat. <coughs> it turns out that saturated fat is not nearly as bad as it was originally thought. Most of the research showing that saturated fat causes heart disease was based on very faulty research. But I'm not going to get into that because I'm talking about trans fat in this video. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Trans fat is a demonic substance. Trans fat does cause cardiovascular disease. It causes a lot of other things. <clears throat> From a bodybuilding perspective, studies show trans fat actually interferes with amino acid metabolism. That means that when you take in protein, it's broken down to amino acids. Essential amino acids are involved in muscle protein synthesis, involved in muscle growth. <clears throat> trans fats interfere with the uptake of amino acids therefore it can blunt muscle gains that's just one effect from a health standpoint 
uh, as I said, tra trans fats stimulate atherosclerosis, stimulate heart disease. A 2% increase in trans fat intake in the diet uh, increases your chances of cardiovascular disease by 23%. Uh, trans fats have also been associated with cancer. They've been associated with diabetes, and they've been with, associated with uh, systemic inflammation. Uh, now, uh, what happened was, w with the knowledge that of the, let's say, negative health effects of trans fats, the government finally, or the Food Administration, uh, Food and Drug Administration specifically, banned trans fats in 2018. Uh, so, uh, and, but what they did is, it, you know, because of pressure by the food industry, you know, they have a lot of money to spend. They have these Washington lobbyists that, you know, basically pay off the politicians. This is by the why this is the same reason why we don't have universal health care, because the paid off politicians in Washington will never agree to uh, universal health care to keep the health insurance companies from ripping off people. But I, again, I don't want to get into political tangential material, but let me put it this way. The, the uh, food industry lobbyists, they manipulated the politicians uh, to uh, and the people that run the Food and Drug Administration to still allow minimal amounts of trans fat in food, specifically any serving of food that has 0 0.5 grams of trans fat or less is considered trans fat free, which really annoys the crap out of me. That's half a gram. But now, if you see, how do you, how can you tell if a food has trans fat? Because you usually list it as partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. It could be partially hydro hydrogenated soybean oil, partially hydrogenated cottonseed oil. As long as it says partially hydrogenated, that is trans fat. Now, certain peanut butters that are still sold, they, they say on the label, trans fat free. But then you look on the uh, on the ingredients, and sure enough, there's partially hydrogenated vegetable. How can they get away with that? Well, per serving, if you take uh, maybe a teaspoon of the peanut butter, you'll be getting, sure enough, 0 0.5 grams of trans fat, which the government considers the same as zero. But a lot of people, in fact, I'd, I'd suggest most people eat more than a teaspoon of butter, uh, of uh, tr of uh, of uh, peanut butter and as soon as you eat more you're getting one two three four five six grams of trans fat now you're getting into real bad health territory so the uh, these lobbyists paid off the government to still allow trans fats on the market which is really disgusting when you think about it uh, the maximum allowed in, uh, intake of trans fat in food uh, is two grams a day and let me tell you something it's very, very easy to ingest more than two grams of trans fat. They, again, they're still found in processed foods and, and they uh, that were purchased before the ban went into effect. Here's an example of a couple of... Uh, now, I should point out, wait, before I forget, you know, the trans fats is a broad category because there's artificial trans fats, which involves, again, the addition of a hydrogen to natural fat sources like vegetable oil. But trans fats also exist in nature. Natural trans fats are formed by bacteria in the stomachs of cattle, sheep, and goats, ruminants they're called. Beef, lamb, and dairy products naturally contain natural trans fats. Uh, other types of uh, meat such as poultry, fish, and pork contain small amounts of these natural trans fats. But here's, here's an important point. The natural trans fats are not dangerous at all to health. They don't cause any problems unless you eat a ton of, of them. Mo you'd have to eat a lot of meat, a lot of dairy to get a, let's say, toxic dose of natural trans fats. As a matter of fact, one particular natural trans fat, some of you might have heard of, it's called conjugated linoleic acid or CLA. Numerous studies have shown that, that CLA uh, seems to, uh, seems to uh, actually have beneficial effects on preventing cardiova cardiovascular disease, helping to prevent diabetes. In other words, it's a good trans fat. Uh, so, you know, again, natural trans fats are less harmful than the, uh, uh, the artificial trans fat. Uh, then they have something called fully hydrogenated oil. Now, fully hydrogenated oil contains a saturated fat called stearic acid. Stearic acid uh, is a saturated fatty acid 
it's found in meat and other sources that does not raise cholesterol levels. It does not raise cholesterol levels. It's also found in chocolate. But stearic acid actually helps to reduce levels of low-density lipoprotein compared with other types of saturated fat. Fully hydrogenated oil sometimes is blended with polyunsaturated oil to improve the uh, texture. That's called interesterification. Uh, the interesterified fats don't contain trans fats. But let's see about some of the fat, some of the foods that you might come across that still con uh, contain the bad trans fats. Shortening, uh, vegetable shortening, invented, like I say, some of them could still cont uh, contain trans fats. Uh, again, the government uh, decreed that they be removed by no later than 2018. But again, if you see, if you look, you got to read food labels. If you read the food label, if you see any food, any food, and it's all usually processed foods, if it contains partially hydrogenated vegetable oil of any kind, that is trans fats. Don't buy it. Don't use it. Because you're pr you're going to be definitely getting too much trans fat. It's very it's the wor one of the worst things you could eat. Some of the old micro microwavable popcorns contained uh, uh, a lot a good amount of pro uh, partially hydrogen oil. Uh, they replaced them, uh, so the, some of them don't. Uh, most of them now don't contain trans fats. It still so it shows up in st certain types of vegetable oils. Uh, you might see them in certain types of margarine. Margarine's crap. You're better off actually eating butter than margarine. Margarine was almost pure saturated, uh, uh, I mean trans fat. <coughs> um, so uh, the, uh, the most common source of trans fat today, I mean like I say, after 2018 most of the tra uh, trans fats, the artificial trans fats were removed from food because of the government ban. But it's still show, it's still found in certain for the worst offender by far is is fa is a fried fast food, fried chicken, battered fish, donuts, French fries, and and mozzarella uh, uh, sticks that they sell, they all contain trans fats. They're very bad for you, because what happens is when they these th these foods are cooked at a very high cooking temperature, and it causes the trans fat content to actually increase because. Uh, uh, when you when you cook it, so uh, uh, the fit trans fat content also increases each time the oil is reused for frying. And you see, if you go to a lot of fast food places, they just you know reuse the oil to cook stuff like French fries and all that. That stuff uh, that stuff could be uh, actually pretty rich in trans fats. It also could show up in bakery products. I know that most people are who are into health avoid bakery products. They're usually just plain crap, processed carbs, no good for you. But they could still trans fats could sh still show up in muffins, cakes, pastries, and pies. They're often made with vegetable shortening or margarine. There's your trans fats. The vegetable shortening helps reduce a flaky, softer pastry, and has a longer shelf life. But it's very bad for you because of the trans fats. Trans fats also show up in non-dairy coffee creamers. Uh, you know the thing about the uh, the coffee creamers is that. You know, you'll see that it has partially hydrogenated uh, oil in there as an ingredient because it gives it a type of, you know, thicker consistency, more like cre actual cream. Uh, but the truth is, I mean, usually you only take a small amount of non-dairy creamer. But if you know, if you drink like several cups of coffee and you use, a, you know, quite a bit of non-dairy coffee creamer, uh, then you, then you, uh, you, can, uh, you can go into trouble, get into trouble. But the truth is most brands of non-dairy coffee creamers, they have switched to fully hydrogenated oil, which doesn't have the same effects, as I said, of, uh, of trans fats. Uh, trans fats, other foods that it could still show up in, potato and corn chips, most of them are free of trans fats, but you got to read the ingredients. Some of them still contain hydrogenated vegetable oil. Crackers, some of them still contain partially hydrated fat. And even... Uh, uh, even some frozen pizzas, believe it or not, still contain partially hydrogenated uh, fat. So that's about it uh, for all I could say. I mean, there's a lot of other nuances uh, uh, related to trans fats. I don't want to make the video too long, so I'm not going to get into that. I just wanted to warn you, uh, I guess the take-home message of this video is to read food labels. Uh, and remember that trans fats are most likely to show up you know, again, the government was paid off by the food industry to still allow a certain amount of trans fat into food, even though it's basically horrible. One of the worst things you could eat, 
It causes just about every degenerative disease. It's even associated with Alzheimer's disease. But the government pay, you know, paid off, I mean the food companies paid off the government, the FDA, to still allow. It shows you how much they care about human health. But anyway, the point being, uh, what I suggest is read all food labels. Uh, you, you should always avoid processed food to begin with. Processed food's garbage. It's garbage. It's usually refined, not just refined fat like trans fat, but also contains refined sugars. It contains high fructose corn syrup. All this stuff is garbage. This stuff is not going to do anything for you except ruin your health and make you fat. So you should always avoid processed foods, but uh, like TV dinners, that kind of crap. But if you do, for some reason, decide that you want to eat that stuff, read the ingredient label. If you see any form of, of a partially hydrogenated oil on there, my suggestion is don't eat it. It's not worth it. Don't eat it. Go hungry if you have to. Trans fats are that bad. They're pure, absolute, unadulterated garbage. So if you want further information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, effective fat loss techniques, ergogenic age, hormonal therapy, supplement science, women's health and fitness, and many other topics. Nobody covers as many topics as I do. And Applied Metabolics, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it's 30 to 50 pages. Uh, and and I, I personally, I've looked at a lot of other digital publications. I don't think anything matches uh, Applied Metabolics in terms of the, uh, of the amount of, of, uh, of information each issue contains and the level of, of depth that each article covers. Each article tells you everything you, you need to know about any particular subject. I also cover off the road topics in applied metabolics that you won't find on websites or other publications. Uh, you know, the, not, I, I cover more than the usual stuff. I, it's, you could say it's, it's kind of an advanced nutrition type of thing. I go way past the basics and I go into a lot of stuff, but the point being, it's a, I call it applied metabolics because it's all practical information, information you can use today. I've been a professional writer for over 40 years. I know how to write for the public. Uh, any technical terms that are involved in the, uh, uh, in the publication, I explain fully so you don't have to pull out a science dictionary to read applied metabolics. So subscribe today. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, general medicine. That's only for subscribers. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage. Again, only for subscribers. Who, If you want to send me short questions, anything you might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything else that comes to mind related to nutrition and exercise, I will answer your short question. If you're a current subscriber, I don't answer unsolicited questions. You're welcome to uh, list possible uh, future video uh, ideas uh, in the comment section under this video. Uh, if I feel that it, the uh, suggestion that you leave will interest a large number of people, I will uh, I will definitely uh, try and do a video on that. Uh, you know, give you the information that you want. Uh, what else can I say? If you want to have the best one you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Take